If these irons here had any of the big brands slapped on the back of it, they would be worth an absolute fortune. But let me tell you why. No one's gonna buy these. Guys, how you doing? Welcome back to a brand new video. Simon down at Sanford Springs Golf Club. Very windy. Not as windy as it has been, but it is still pretty windy. So I'm going to find some places to film some audio so it doesn't sound like a hurricane through the entirety of this video. We're going to play a game. I'm not going to show you the brand or the name of these irons until the latter part of this video and i'm going to give it a review i want you to have a look at the aesthetics of this club the sound the feel the way i'm hitting it the feedback the response i'm giving to you and i want you to think about how much these irons would cost brand new so what they came out retail they're about five years old now six years old and what they're currently going on for ebay and i'm telling you now no one's buying these clubs. No one. So I recently purchased these clubs of a gentleman named Richard. He actually watches the channel. He sold me quite a few bits. He loves a tinker, doesn't necessarily get out and play um, golf as much as he used to due to injuries. And he's also upgraded to the PXGs and I don't blame him seeing as the price brand new is well the same as second hand. So again, that's a very good option looking at the O211s when it comes to an iron set uh, as you're not gonna lose that much in investment at 75 pound a stick and you get to build them. Now, one thing that's going for this set is the black finish. As you can see, I'm trying not to show the make or the brand. As you can see, a hint of red in the back there. And from above and the sole, I think they look amazing. Now, I think the floor that let this brand down or this particular model from the brand, because I do think the brand itself is underrated, underrated when it comes to irons. I've done quite a few videos on this brand when it comes to irons um, and how they're just undervalued in the secondhand market. But from a dress and above and from this side, they look clean. They are blacked out. If this was a Titleist T100 um, with a black finish or a Ping, I don't know, G700, blacked out you know what i'm talking about a p790 that thing is going to be an absolute fortune and for one club of those you're pretty close into buying this entire set and it's not down to performance i can tell you now these things would have to basically blow up in my hands for me to say this isn't worth the value that they are currently going for in the second hand club. So let's talk about the little story that inspired this video and it started yesterday when Nigel, lovely bloke, came over to buy four bags off me uh, and then ended up buying bits and bobs for his friends that started the game and the main kind of criteria really was that it had to be a name brand. It, had, it doesn't matter how old but it had to be Ping, TaylorMade, Callaway, the four big brands let's say in the market otherwise it wasn't any good. He picked up these irons and he saw that they were black and he had saw that they had nice grips and multi-coordinated shafts um, and therefore he thought they were expensive. He said, I bet these are worth a bit of money. I actually told him they're incredibly reasonable for the price, but because the brand that he saw on the side of them, he decided not to, which I found incredibly interesting. I'm not saying it's a right or wrong answer because many times in not only this game, but any sport, any facet of life, we do trust particular brands in terms of quality, engineering, materials. My question really is, are those differences worth almost five times the price? Right, so we've played three holes with these irons. And before I sing their praises, I do have to talk about the downsides of these clubs and potentially why they just don't seem to get the same kind of love. And yes, okay, these are the black version, but I'm going to talk about all Lynx irons in general. Lynx, boom, boom is exactly what these iron sets are. And I think as soon as you see the back of it, it's gonna turn off 50% of the audience. From a top, from above, from the face, I think they have absolutely nailed it. From the back, it's garish, it's bold, and it looks like it's been named after a new Fortnite map. And when these irons are basically partnered up and geared for that more senior player, the player that's got a bit of a slower swing speed, these are soft regular, they're graphite. Just generally from top to bottom, they would fit and suit that beginner slash slower swing speed player but when you have the aesthetics that then matches a more of a teenager someone that's just getting into the game you have a very niche market the second reason I think these irons would have struggled as well when anyone was trying or testing them potentially for a club fit because you can get a Lynx club fit just as you can get any other kind of club fit um, up and down the country is the sound 
and sound is a very big perception. When we're trying to hit a golf ball, we want to feel like it's solid. We've got a big piece of metal behind us and no matter where the shot is, it's going to sound like it's been hit and stayed hit. However, out the middle, these things sound superb. Out the toe and heel, just as I'm showing a few shots here, and we definitely had them, they, it didn't sound convincing. And it's not to say the performance wasn't there. I shot level, I had one birdie, one bogey, and one par through these three holes. But you lose that confidence, and confidence is everything in this game. And confidence is especially key when we're not hitting it well. Any set of irons in the world sounds great and feels great when, we, when you nut it through the screws. We need that help and confidence boost when we're getting a bit slappy. And the third reason and downside of this set is how are you going to sell these on? Like, yes, Ping G-Series irons for £300 is more expensive, almost double what these are, but you're not going to have that sound difference and you probably will have that confidence within the toe and heel strikes throughout the club. But not only that, you're going to have a long line of people after you looking to buy them as well. So yes, you put double the amount of money in, but you're only going to lose 10% if you need to get rid of those clubs quick. You put those on a five day auction, they will go for 280, they will go for 290, they will go with 270 plus change. These Lynx irons, half the price than what the pings would be. But if you went to go and snap sell them to upgrade to another set, is there that long line of people looking for them? And this is where you're gonna see the difference. You're spending more money on ping, Titleist Callaway in the second hand market, but after a year, two years, you're losing a lot less than the lower brands. Now with the downsides out of the way, let's talk about the performance. Because even though the sound was somewhat off-putting, we were still getting that distance that you expect from a cavity back iron. Not only that, these irons are some of the lightest that I've ever hit. Now I'm not too sure if the Boom Boom did bring out quite a few in the series. This black particular version where they did it in steel as well. But with this graphite soft reg, which I consistently see on the second hand market, and the one that you're more likely to find if you were going searching for it, is incredible incredibly light which backs up what I was saying at the start who's it designed for club head speed getting the ball up in the air high launch low spin equates to distance now control wasn't necessarily there but when it's wet and windy like today I didn't need that high spin rate hence why I got away with my short game when it came to the chipping on play side of it and I still stand by the comment which I always do because I'm not saying you're gonna find these irons I'm not saying you should go and look for these particular irons but when you get to the bracket no matter what brand and you're gonna see this from Adams and Ben Ross it comes to the iron sets 10 to 15 pounds per club is a win-win if these have been designed within the last 10 years and these were built in 2015 so seven years old and you've got a grip a shaft with a good looking head that gives you confidence from above and allows you to start playing this game for 100 to 150 pounds and if all you have is 100 to 150 pounds to get to four to pitch and wedge in your bag this is a great option to go down. You're going to learn, you're going to cut your teeth, you're going to know what you like the look of and the feel of in the future, and it's going to give you 85 to 90% of what all the other big boys are. It just means you're going to have to make up for it in technique, practice, and lessons. And I'm telling you now, that's not a bad thing. So guys, there you have it. Thank you ever so much for watching this video. Leave it a like if you liked it. Subscribe if you are new. Catch you guys later.